Bubbly Moten, which is most commonly referred to as Lady Finger Peak, is a distinctive, imposing spire of granite located in a remote portion of the Karakoram Range in Pakistan. Notably, Lady Finger Peak is actually located on the southwestern ridge of the Ultar Sar Massif, which is the location of the incident I covered in my previous video on the channel. Standing at a height of 6,000 meters at its summit, Lady Finger Peak's distinctly steep slopes are noticeably almost entirely bare of the thick layers of snow that blanket the surrounding peaks, as, well, there's simply very few places along the peak's sheer faces for the snow to actually stick. Due to its distinctive appearance, Lady Finger Peak has been noted by locals living in the region for centuries, and after intrepid mountaineers began to frequent the many massive mountains of the Karakoram Range, it wouldn't take long for Lady Finger Peak to garner attention within the community. However, likely in large part due to its immensely foreboding appearance, it would remain relatively unknown until the late 1970s, the time period where mountaineering's upper echelon began to turn their attention away from simply climbing the tallest mountains in the world in favor of attempting to summit lesser known, albeit significantly more technically demanding and dangerous peaks, such as Cerro Torre in the Andes, or the imposing Trango Towers, the latter of which are close enough to Lady Finger Peak that they can be captured in photos together. And it is the Trango Towers that Lady Finger Peak is most often compared to concerning its difficulty to ascend, a serious comparison that is a true testament to the overwhelmingly brutal and technically demanding climbing conditions on its sheer slopes that must be overcome by climbers seeking to reach its summit, which, I might note, is razor thin and cannot be stood atop, and is rather more of a sling your legs or body over it type of summit. Needless to say, the unrelentingly difficult climbing conditions on its slopes have truly earned Lady Finger Peak its fearsome reputation as one of the top contenders for the hardest peak to ascend across the entire planet. Lady Finger Peak is not a particularly prominent peak outright, as it features a prominence of less than 200 meters from the nearby Hunza Peak, separated from it by a steeply declining saddle, where the sheer face of Lady Finger Peak can be accessed from a point approximately 800 meters below the summit. However, this approach is far simpler in theory from afar than it is in practice, as the approach to reach the saddle and the subsequent circumnavigation across the saddle are both in their own rights extremely dangerous and difficult affairs, and are then followed by a grueling and unforgiving climb up the remaining portion of Lady Finger Peak's sheer slopes. The first successful ascent of the peak would finally take place following this route up the eastern face on May 22, 1982, completed by French climbers Patrick Cordier and Jacques Marin. As they ascended the steep slopes of the Ultar Sar Massif to reach the saddle and while crossing the saddle, the duo were nearly constantly fearing for their lives due to conditions ripe to suddenly erupt into powerful and deadly avalanches, and upon reaching the foot of Lady Finger Peak's eastern face, the pair were barraged by falling rocks from above. In the years following their historic first ascent, much like many of the world's most difficult to climb peaks that I've covered in my other videos, Lady Finger Peak would see very few summit attempts, and even fewer successes. Interestingly, many of the following successful summiters would bring paragliding gear along with them, so once they had successfully summited the peak, they could simply leap from it and descend that way, rather than brave the innumerable hazards of rappelling down one of the peak's faces or descending back across the saddle. Notably, of the few climbers with the technical abilities to even attempt to ascend Lady Finger Peak's spired slopes, the peak seemed to garner the most attention 
from Japanese climbers in particular, as several of the peak's notable subsequent summit successes have been accomplished by Japanese climbers. However, one such summit attempt by a rising star within the Japanese mountaineering community, the subject of this very video, would shock the Japanese mountaineering community to its core in the year 1997. Kiyoshi Matsuoka was born on June 3, 1972 in Tokyo, Japan, and would begin to build his reputation within the Japanese mountaineering community following his first major ascent attempt of the 6,952-meter peak Aconcagua in Argentina, where, at just 19 years old, he was able to reach an altitude of 6,300 meters before he was ultimately forced to withdraw from his summit bid. Two years later, in 1993, he would achieve his first major high-altitude ascent as a member of a 14-person expedition team to the 7,295-meter Crown Peak, which is located in China, reaching its summit on July 29th. Following this successful ascent, Kiyoshi would then shift his focus towards improving his big wall climbing skills, spending 1994 honing his skills with ascents of Mount Takane, Mount Maruyama, and Mount Hotaka in Japan. The following year, in 1995, he would continue to improve his abilities in the mecca of the rock climbing community, Yosemite National Park. In 1996, Kiyoshi would seek to put the skills he had gained over the previous two years to the test, as that summer, he would attempt the most ambitious, difficult, and dangerous ascent of his climbing career to date, when he paired up with another highly skilled rising star within the Japanese mountaineering community named Akito Yamazaki. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, Wait a minute! This sounds kind of familiar right now? That's because, well, this ambitious ascent attempt was the first ascent of Ultar Sar, which I touched on in the previous video on the channel. Now, so I avoid repeating myself too much, if you aren't familiar with this ascent, I highly suggest that you watch that video for more details about it. However, as it does play a major, pivotal role in this story, I'll briefly recap some of the major events that transpired during the duo's brutal historic first ascent of Ultar Sar, so I can catch everyone up to speed, even if you haven't happened to watch my Ultar Sar video yet. Kiyoshi and Akito would attempt the ascent alpine style and climbed exclusively during the nighttime to avoid being swept up by the many frequent avalanches that thunder down Ultarsar's faces. After a brutal eight days of highly technically difficult climbing, with their supplies nearly expended, the duo would reach the summit in triumph on July 11th, 1996. During their descent, however, they would end up being caught in a fierce blizzard and were trapped in their bivy for five days, during which time Akito began to experience stomach aches. The two climbers would reach base camp eight days after they had stood on the summit on July 19th. After reaching base camp, Akito's stomach ache would rapidly worsen and he would ultimately perish as a result of his condition before a rescue helicopter could arrive. Following this historic and immensely difficult first ascent of Ultar Sar, Kiyoshi had truly cemented his position as one of the top stars within the Japanese mountaineering community and was awarded recognition as one of the top five Japanese climbers by the Japan Himalayan Association. Over the next year, Kiyoshi published a memoir detailing his perspective of the historic first ascent. However, as he had stated in his book, and according to many of his friends, Akito's death had weighed heavily on Kiyoshi since his return from Ultar Sar. In June of 1997, just shy of a year after Akito's death, Kiyoshi would return to the foot of Ultar Sar to base camp along with Akito's family to erect a memorial in his honor and to mourn his loss. 
However, on June 11th, Akito's family would depart from the region, while Kiyoshi opted to stay, as he had seemingly set his sights on an ascent of Ladyfinger Peak during his return to Pakistan, and he would begin an attempt to ascend the sheer southeastern face of the peak, tempting this climb entirely on his own. Kiyoshi would set to work on his difficult and ambitious attempt to scale Ladyfinger Peak in the days following, and began the process of climbing a pitch, setting his ropes, and then descending again to retrieve his gear below, and as he had prepared for the climb to take at least as long as his ascent of Ultar Sar had. This meant he was often forced to make several trips to haul his gear up the mountainside with him. As Kiyoshi methodically ascended the face on June 26th, 1997, tragedy would suddenly strike, as while Kiyoshi was in the process of hauling his gear up the face, he was struck by fast falling debris from a rock slide that had occurred above him, which subsequently sheared through his ropes and sent him plummeting down to the foot of the face below. Later that day, after Kiyoshi had not made radio or satellite phone contact, as he had previously stated that he would, officials were notified and were dispatched to Ladyfinger Peak in the days following, and subsequently located his body amongst the rubble of an apparent rockfall, with much of his gear strewn about around him, and other pieces of his gear were spotted still hanging from the face, although no attempt to recover them would be made. The news of Kiyoshi's death sent a shockwave rippling through the Japanese mountaineering community, with the news of his death spreading very quickly within it as many members of other Japanese high-altitude climbing teams would state that it had been such a blow to the community and the climbers that several teams would outright abandon their summit bids that year upon receiving the news, and several other teams who did opt to continue their climbs and were ultimately unsuccessful in their efforts would note that after receiving word of his death, the morale of the climbers in these teams had clearly taken a significant blow, which had impacted their team's climbing abilities, and had contributed to their inability to reach their summit successfully. In wake of his death, the Japanese mountaineering community would collectively mourn his passing, as he was a well-liked figure within the community, and several of his friends and colleagues would compile their heartfelt and heartbroken words into a memoir titled the young star who disappeared in the Karakoram Range the following year in 1998. In the years following Kiyoshi's death, there would be some debate within the Japanese mountaineering community about his intentions behind his attempt to ascend Ladyfinger Peak by himself, as some reasoned he had attempted it simply out of convenience since he was already in the region, while others contended that he had planned the attempt months in advance. Yet, some others would suggest that his intentions behind the climb were much darker and similar to those of John Waterman, a climber who was the topic of an earlier video on my channel. What his intentions ultimately were, however, will remain a mystery. However, Kiyoshi Matsuoka's legacy as a legend within the Japanese mountaineering community, who had his life tragically cut short not long after his 26th birthday, will live on for many more years to come. Thank you all for watching.